Hello, everyone, and welcome to part three of our webinar series. I'm Jeff Linderman, a senior specialist with Go Engineer, and today we have Emmanuel LaRue from Dassault Systems. We ran Sue also with Dassault Systems, presented in part two of our three part series. Emmanuel presented part one, and he's doing today's as well. He will be our technical presenter and also addressing any questions you may have. So in this webinar series, you're looking at using CST Studio to analyze electronic design in PCBs. So we know electronic devices are integrated into many product designs from household appliances, automobiles, medical equipment, aircraft, mobile devices, and more. The electronic circuits are becoming very complex. These circuits must work in conjunction with each other and with other electronic devices while keeping its signal integrity, or SI, and power integrity, PI. There are also electromagnetic compatibility EMC standards that must be met. The PCB boards within the electronic devices will create heat and need to be cooled. Simulation of these designs using CST Studio Suite in the development stage will identify problems that can be corrected prior to the start of manufacture. In today's part three, um, we're looking at, elect at electromagnetic compatibility. So Emmanuel will show why simulation of our electronic device with PCB is needed before FCC EMC testing and understand how signal integrity and power integrity influence our EMI and also use a quick design rule check to get rid of the SI EMI issues without simulation. And he will show a practical case showing conducted emission of a PCB having onboard switch mode power supplies. When we look at the simulation solutions that are offered by Dassault Systems, we see there are many available options from SOLIDWORKS simulation tools, um, the 3D experience platform roles, and Simulia simulation. There's structural, CFD, injection molding, and the electromagnetic simulations available. The CST Studio Suite provides electromagnetic simulation in the Simulia on-premise product. This is what we call a legacy product. In the 3D experience platform, electromagnetics engineer role allows for a cloud-based collaboration and also cloud-based computing for solving your electromagnetic analysis. So CST Studio is an industry leader in electromagnetic simulation and has been since 1992. The suite provides a complete solution for 3D electromagnetic simulation. And CST joined the Simulia product line in 2016. And the worldwide support network for CST has specialists in all areas of electromagnetic design and simulation. So the key features of CST Studio, it's electromagnetic field solvers for applications across the electromagnetic spectrum are connected with a single user interface. It is the end-to-end -end solution for designing, analyzing, and optimizing electromagnetic components and systems and we have the capability to import PCB designs from most of the popular EDA layout tools. Um, our import types, we can do ODB++, Altium, Cadence, Mentor Graphics, Zookin, all of those. So in our webinar series, the capabilities, we'll see these are all of the capabilities here. We have high frequency 3D electromagnetic simulation of high frequency components. There's a low frequency solvers for dedicated to simulation of static low frequency devices. Um, the particle advanced simulation tool for fast accurate analysis of dynamics and 3D electromagnetic fields. Thermal and mechanics, which allows for multi-physic coupling of CST Studio products and thermal or mechanical stress. Cable tool for analysis of conducted transmission, EMI, and EMS on cable structures. PCBs and packages. This is what we're going to be using for um, importing EDA layout tool PCB designs. PCB rule checking. We're actually doing design rule checks for PCBs. 
And then circuits as systems are the easy to use schematic design tool that's also within the CST studios. So in our three part webinar series, what we're using and displaying are the PCBs and packages for the EDA import or PCB imports, the PCB rule checks, the schematic circuits and systems, high frequency analysis, thermal and mechanics. We use the thermal one in part two of the series. So today we're seeing the high frequency, the rule checks, all of those. And with that, I'll turn it over to you, Emmanuel, for your technical presentation. So for the agenda for today, we are going to, uh, first of all, position uh, the need to, pro to make some pre-compliance EMC simulation. I'm going to explain why it's so important not to wait to be in the anechoic chamber to make the measurement with the competent body uh, to see if your product are going to pass the normative. It's important to act before. Then I'm going to, to show that at, uh, at the end, the electromagnetic compatibility aspect is coming as the last point of a workflow that starts from a design rule check, SI simulation, PI simulation, because if you have a bad signal of power integrity um, on your PCB, then you will have uh, bad EMI, electromagnetic interferences. It's important to understand that uh, having quality on your signals that propagate on the PCB traces will be a must to uh, ensure uh, a good compliance with the electromagnetic compatibility normatives. Then I'm going to, uh, to show how we, have, we can import from uh, electronic and, and uh, mechanical CAD. Then I will deep dive on the design root check. As you announced, huh, Jeff, it's important. Without making any simulation, we are able to make some check about the quality of the PCB. Then uh, I'm going to, to establish a little bit some uh, uh, unique, unique point where, uh, our technology is great to achieve this electromagnetic compatibility prediction. And I'm going to come to, to run for you a practical case, conducted emissions, which is good because this is what uh, half of you said have difficulty to pass in terms of normatives. Then, as we want to push electromagnetic engineer, which is the role on the 3D experience works portfolio on cloud, I'm going to show how you can speed up your simulation using the AI performance computing on cloud. At that point, uh, let's start. So uh, why do we need at all to talk about electromagnetic compatibility? Alors, what is the definition? It is the ability of an electrical system to work in its electromagnetic environment without influencing the other device so we are talking about emissions at that point, or being influenced by uh, surrounding equipment, immunity or susceptibility. Um, it is crucial for all products. It's well regulated uh, per country and per industry. So the normatives are not the same if you work for information technology equipment, ITE, or if you work for automotive equipment. Also, it's good to know that automotive OEMs they impose very strict standards on the single component they purchase from the vendors. So it's important to, um, to, uh, to look at that as well. Sometimes even the automotive OEM standards are even uh, more, more difficult to, to, to meet compared to the uh, official standards. Then it's important to, to look at the frequency range because if you consider the kilohertz frequency band, uh, we are talking more about, you know, inverter, voltage regulator, stuff like that. If you go to the radio communication system, you will reach the megahertz, the broadcasting part. And uh, at the end, if you go uh, to digital electronic because of the rise time of very quick digital signals and uh, for radar application, you, you reach the gigahertz frequency band. Um, and you have two options. You can wait and see. You do physical testing on the left, or you do virtual testing. You do a modeling before you anticipate. Alors here are the many points I want to, to tell you about. If you do physical testing, you need to have a prototype that has been fabricated first. So you need to wait to have this first prototype. And then if something goes wrong and you don't pass the normative, you will ask a guru, an EMC guru, to come and to put a capacitor here and there to fix the issue. And it can take time. And it's not easy to make design iterations. It will be cost and time consuming. 
uh, at the end, you also depend on the availability and capability of the testing lab. Usually you have, uh, if you don't have your testing lab in your company, you need to go to a special laboratory and uh, the competent bodies are the ones that are certified uh, to, um, to make the measurement according to the normatives. Those, those uh, laboratories are not always available. So uh, it's not that easy. On the right, we have the virtual testing. Here, uh, we saw a boom in the last 10 years, I can tell you. And when I, I got my PhD in 98 about electromagnetic radiated emission prediction from printed circuit boards, and it was just the beginning. In aerospace and defense, people were trying to make some radiated emissions simulation. Now, we saw a boom in the industry in the last 10 years. And the reason is, the main reason is that um, simulation allows you to uh, see the invisible. That is to say, you can really uh, go and see why uh, the current is flowing that way, uh, bringing really the, your product not to pass the normative. So it does not uh, answer to the question, it, it just answers also to the question why, and not just yes or no, I'm going to pass the test. Then it allows you to make optimization, um, to, to, to try to optimize your, your device. And you can run se several tests in parallel during the night using job control, for example. So it's really nice. And um, at the end, it, it reduces the engineering time to get to the better product. Here I have an example on a DC-DC converter of, uh, in the case of the measurement I have information if I pass or, 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 or I fail the normative. On the right, for the simulation, I see the fields and I'm able to do troubleshooting. I'm able to understand why I have these uh, pass in red responsible for the issue. And I don't need to manufacture, so I can act earlier. So what is always important for that is to consider the time you need to achieve uh, the manufacturing stage of your, of your product. And if you put the simulation in the early stage, as soon as you have a layout ready for that, but even though you can act also in the pre-layout phase, the, the earlier you act, the better. Because if you wait, the cost of change is going up as soon as you wait more time and you get to the first prototype. So, for a complete workflow for electronic design analysis, we always start from uh, information coming from the PCB layout, as you said, and uh, also from the schematic. And we run a rule checker in order to see if the rules that have been designed for this PCB, if it is a digital PCB, for example, have been well followed without making any simulation. I will come right to this after. Then in the first seminar with Go Engineer, we had a session about signal and power integrity where I explained how you can uh, provide high diagrams for high speed signals, how you can um, optimize the position of decoupling capacitor to avoid the ground bounce you can have on your power distribution network. But at the end of the day, the, the nets radiate. And this goes, you know, your, your, your PCB put in the box and cables to, uh, to be co confronted with the EMC normatives, as you can see in red on the screen, and here the, 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 the green uh, array is the spectrum of the radiation of your PCB, and you have to be below this red normative. So it's really what we, we will try to do today, but I can ensure you if you have a bad signal integrity, you will have a peak somewhere here that really uh, be a big, will be a big trouble. So everything is connected. Uh, in terms of ECAD and MCAD, what is great here, of course, we, we can leverage the great associativity of electromagnetic engineer with SOLIDWORKS. Uh, we can make whatever analysis with few uh, uh, button click. Now, the point is we can import all those files and also those neutral files, ODB++ and APC 2581. And we can, of course, import the chassis, the case of the device uh, from the mechanical um, it's important because what you are going to test in the anechoic chamber is not the PCB alone. It is the full product. The full product that is going to be put on the market has to be tested. So ideally, you, you would need to make a virtual twin 
of the product with cable, PCB, and, and, and case, and it can be pretty complicated. Therefore, we have some guidelines to, to allow you to make it uh, more simple, not to simulate everything, but to go step by step and enhance your design for electromagnetic compatibility. So in terms of design rule checking, I like that a lot because um, it's important because if you have wrong rules, it will get to, to the EMC limits. And here we have a great tool that is coming from IBM design standards. And um, I've been working in the past with uh, Bruce Archambault uh, from IBM, uh, who's a great guy that uh, was responsible for a research lab uh, from, from where our technology is coming from, from design rule check point of view. And then I, can, I, I want to show you uh, how it works. So basically, uh, you are not going to make any simulation on your PCB. You are going to make a screening of the geometrical property and see if you respect your, your rules. So first of all, you, you need to tag the nets. What kind of nets do you have on your PCB? So you are going to tag them, to name them in terms of net class and uh, explaining, for example, you have a USB 3, you have a DDR4, you have a, a high speed signal here and there. Then you are going to tag the components as well. And you are going to make a screening of the board to see if you have violations. Uh, we have several kinds of rules. For example, I like that one which is a, a, a high speed net that goes above a metal plane and you have a hole. The white part here is a hole in the metal plane, in the ground plane. And of course, if you have a speed signal that is spreading on that net, you will have some uh, current returning on the metal plane and you will need to avoid the hole. And this is going to create a, a transfer inductance. And this is very bad for radiated emission. So this kind of rule can be checked in early design phase as soon as you have a first version of your layout ready. It's very nice. Let's have a look now on the decoupling capacitor where basically we check if you have en enough decoupling capacitor for the power integrity point of view. And here I have an example where we have uh, for the first version of the PCB, the dotted square here where we don't have enough decoupling capacitor. In fact, uh, the root checker is finding different violations. And if you had three decoupling capacitor at those positions where I have a circle, I obtain much less violations. So the rule of the game is a little bit to play with the decoupling capacitor at the early design phase to limit this problem before to make simulations. Because here it's very quick. Uh, because you don't simulate, you just verify rules. Right. Now, value of the precompliance EMC simulation. What do we have here to say? The first value is maybe what everybody will, would dream of. That is to say, to have a great matching between the simulation and the measurement. And this was done uh, in a laboratory in Prague in Czech Republic, where we obtained practically the same results for this DC-DC converter. Alors, you may say, yes, this is nice, but it is a result of a work where you need to put also the schematic inside of your simulation. So it, it needs some efforts from your side to make a good electromagnetic compatibility modeling. And this is achievable for certain kind of tests where we reach a certain maturity. It's not true for all. We will see in, in few minutes. I have a list of the normatives and I will tell you which are the ones that are uh, easier to, to, to meet. Then we have the value of EMC, EMI simulation coming from system standpoint. Basically here, what we have is uh, a PCB connected to a package and you have a system to simulate at the end. And here we have a great statement from EASIC or customer that in fact he is pleased because he is able to simulate such a system up to very high frequency, you see 40 gigahertz. So this is what you can achieve with our technology, uh, especially with our mesh technique. In the time domain, we are able to simulate a very wide band frequency uh, for a system point of view, which is really unique. The third point, and here I have a statement from Fuji Xerox uh, to, to comment, is when you have a system made of an assembly, a CAD assembly, a PCB, and I have the issue that I need to simulate the system. 
And what is great is that you can allow some measurement to be replaced by simulation. Be careful. We must be clear. Uh, you must at least go once into the anechoic chamber to do your test. Measurement is mandatory. But if you have a variation, a variant B that is created on the same model and it has been measured and simulated, the variant B could be just resulting of a change with one part inside that is only simulated. This can be accepted by the competent body when you go for the normative check. And this is what apparently Fuji Xerox is, is doing, where um, it allows really to reduce the number of physical prototypes. Then we have the value of EMCMI, also looking at the kind of results we can provide. In fact, with the array of probes that you can see on the right, uh, that is spread on a spherical grid around the device on the test, it gives you the field value on a single simulation. Second point, you, you, you must know that if you make a simulation, uh, a measurement in an echo chamber for radiated emission, you need to move the antenna from one to four meters and you need to check different polarization of the antenna and keep uh, the more highest electromagnetic field that is measured. So this is a certain uh, series of simulation you would need to do. Here what we have with this cylinder near field scan, we can really uh, model exactly what is going to the simulate to the measurement, but with only one simulation and with one single post processing step. So this is very nice. Now I want to deep dive a little bit on the kind of test we can cover. My pleasure. So here we, we, we are going to deep dive a little bit uh, about the EMC test setup. So what are the test setup that are available that we can simulate? So we have on the, on the horizontal axis, we have the type of the test. So as we know, uh, and on the, on the vertical axis, we have the standards, the frequencies, the input specifications and the maturity of the simulation today. So in the case of uh, emissions, for example, radiated emissions, we have those standards, a SHIST, a ISO, and so on. And very often, yes, the frequency band is between 30 megahertz and 1 gigahertz, okay? And you need to measure the field at a certain distance. Uh, here, we have really best in class solution for that kind of test. Huh? And we have a, a system that uh, is the creation of the model because as soon as you have your, your product, uh, you import from the mechanical electronical CAD, you need also to emulate what you do in the test. And here we have some, uh, some, um, some uh, preloaded uh, file that we can use in the VDAR that I'm going to show in a minute. In the case of uh, uh, conducted, uh, for example, conducted here, uh, VCI, which is conducted immunity, uh, bulk current injection, or a DC DC converter, uh, conducted emissions, we have also very good solutions. Uh, in the case of electrostatic discharge, I put here a, a, a new model that has been uh, provided a few weeks ago that it is very nice. And um, it allows to, 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 to simulate the, the, the direct discharge or indirect discharge, so discharge in the air using vertical and horizontal plane. So it's very nice. So for that as well, you have a good solution. Where it is a bit difficult is for some specific immunity standard where uh, radiated immunity standard, for example, where it's not that easy to uh, replicate in the simulation exactly what is done in the test. So it's not that the software is not able to do it. It's the automation of the measurements. Because sometimes you need to locate uh, the voltage or the current at the pin of uh, integrated circuit to know if your device is going to change of state. And uh, we don't have something automatic in the software to do that. So you need to have your own know-how to have to look to voltage and current at the pins. And if a voltage of three volts is telling you something compared to your data sheet of your of your of your chip. 
then you can you can use the software, but it's not uh, um, it's not um, you press the button and you go. Okay, so that is not the same maturity where we talk about the normatives. So therefore, it's important. The first question, and to be very honest, is what kind of simulation you want to do, what kind of test you want to emulate, and we will tell you, yes, it's very mature, you can go. We are going to teach you, right, because you need to make a good model. We're going to explain you how to do it. And for all the kind of, of, uh, of uh, simulation, uh, we will say, yes, we can do something, but it's not out of the box. So we'll be very, very, very uh, trustful with you. And also we have the military standards, the Tempest and all the other things for the aerospace and defense. We can work on that as well. Good, so what do you need for your simulation? You need the PCB input, so for example, the DB++. You need the schematic available from the PCB. You need the housing, so for coming from the, the CAD. You need also to have the setup, the test setup. This is coming from the normatives. And eventually you need certain protocol uh, used in some countries. And these are the input you need to do for your simulation. Then, you may recognize this uh, icon, which is very famous at CST. Uh, basically, we, we have these, uh, uh, on the thousand part of this compass, I would say we have uh, capability to have you to be guided by your visa. And if you press on it, you will see it will be even better in the next version, 23GA. We have a capability to prepare for you the setup for your simulation. So you don't have, you, you are going to place your product on the blue area here. Everything is ready for you. The probe in green are set at the right distance so that you are ready to, to make your simulation. This is for radiated emission. This is for SHIS for 25, which is valid in Europe uh, as a normative for radiated emission. I can tell you that we have that for several of them, but not for all of them. If you don't have it for your normative, you will have to build the model yourself and we can help you. What kind of result we get? For radiated emission, of course, we get the electric field at a certain distance and we have the power coupled at receiver. For the radiated immunity, uh, we, are, we can simulate the shield effectiveness of an enclosure or the bulk in, current injection testing, which is very common in automotive uh, market. For conducted emission, we will simulate the common mode noise and the filter, the shock inductance that can, you can put on cables to lower them. And we have also the ESD gun, as I was saying. Now I want to dedicate a bit more on one case, which is a, a conducted emission of a switching module that you can see here on a PCB that is pretty complex. And it's a flex PCB, uh, including a, a, a fixed PCB and another one. So you have two PCB connected with a flex and you have a switching module over there. So this is our device under test. We want to predict conductor emission, So we are going to put the PCB above a, a wooden table at a certain distance. And we are going to draw two cables from the uh, PCB uh, that we are going to connect to a LISN. LISN is a certain impedance that is uh, explained in the normative documentation, okay? And we are going to, to see what do we get with the EMI receiver. This is basically what we do in the measurement. We are going to do the same in the simulation. So, of course, there is a bit of work because the PCB is easy to import. As you said, Jeff, we can just get it from ODB, from Cadence, from um, Altium. Uh, it's easy. But for the, the schematic, we need to uh, model uh, inside the active parts that are relevant. And here, basically, we have the capability to use several blocks in our circuit uh, schematic, uh, Design Studio. And you see, you can uh, design your circuit yourself, and you, you can also use some spice uh, or touchstone file if, uh, if needed. Then, we are going to get a big model like that, where in the middle you have your PCB, your two PCB and flex PCB model uh, in the middle. You will have all your uh, schematics that has been modeled. And in blue, this is what comes from the normative. This is the LISN and the cable. So at the end of the day, you make a simulation uh, and you come basically uh, without decoupling capacitor, okay? 
uh, we have two lines. So this is why we have two uh, series of curves. So in red is the situation at the lean uh, without the decoupling capacitor. You see in red, we have a very high level with 80 dB, dB microvolt per meter. It's a very high level. If you insert the decoupling capacitor in blue, we can lower uh, the decoupling, the, the, the feed, the, 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 the emissions, um, the, the voltage by 40 dB, which is really a lot, especially after the 60 uh, f uh, megahertz frequency. So this is, this is exactly what you can, you can obtain with a, a mitigation effect of adding decoupling capacitor. And here you can see here exactly the location are in blue. Uh, we have uh, several circles where we have inserted the decoupling capacitor and you can see the effect. We bring stable the conductor emission test for the E-field at 85 gigahertz. So you see uh, how we can, we can manage it. Then imagine you need to put your PCB into a box and the box is metallic. Uh, of course, the, the, the metallic box is going to provide you some shield effectiveness because it will basically uh, be like in a Faraday cage. But the issue sometimes, as you can see here, you, you have the, the, the electric field that is measured at a certain prop distance in dB microvolt per meter, huh? and you have PCB alone in red and PCB put into enclosure in blue. So of course, as we expect, we have 20 dB less if you put the PCB in the box because the box is going to shield the electromagnetic field. Unfortunately, <laughs> At 480 megahertz, you have even more field, including the box, than with the PCB alone. Why is that? And you can see it here. It's because you have a resonance. You have a resonance at this frequency, which is unwanted, and it is the slot resonance. So it's really not good. And the first idea that come to my mind, yes, is it everything well uh, connected at the level of the enclosure? And see these cylinders, the four cylinders, these are gaskets or screws, a simple screw that will permit to connect the cover because this box in reality is a, is a empty, uh, empty box with a cover on top. And at the extremity of the, of the aperture, you have a slot that allow the, the wave to propagate. So with the four screw, you are going to connect everything well together. And you will have the, you will avoid those resonance. In green, you can see you don't have the resonance anymore. You have another one, which is a bit uh, higher, but it's not an issue. You are, comp you are good uh, compared to what you wanted to have. You have, yeah, mo mo more than uh, 20, 30 dB of uh, shield effectiveness. So this is exactly what you can reach with your, um, with the software. You can enhance your design to overcome the electromagnetic uh, conductivity normally. Then the last point uh, for today is for me to tell you that yes, we can import from mechanical CAD, electronical CAD and make simulation uh, to do a pre-compliance uh, test, uh, having the design in front of you and not having a prototype in front of us. Uh, but you need uh, some hardware because uh, our simulation most of the time operates in the time domain. So it's good because we don't consume too much RAM compared to frequency uh, domain method. But uh, if the model is very big, it can take some time. So here I have an example of a PCB. You see it's the same PCB. So it's a monster. You have two PCBs with a plex. And you simulate with the time domain solver, which is the one you will need to use for the uh, electromagnetic compatibility simulation. And we have 43 billion of cells. So you can imagine if you make your mesh 43 billions, not millions, billions. So it's a monster. And um, uh, it, it will need on my laptop four hours, 20 minutes to simulate on six core, which is the baseline for me to compare. And I'm using a last generation of, uh, of uh, hardware. Now, what I can do? I can choose to run the same model on the cloud because electromagnetic engineer allows to, to run on the cloud up to 16 core. Huh? You don't need to pay extra for it. And at least you divide by two the simulation time, which is pretty nice. Then if you buy simulation sim unit or credits, uh, which is the flower over there, it allows you uh, to run uh, on the cloud using more cores and even 
to activate GPU. You know the graphic cards from NVIDIA that are used for gaming? We are using them to accelerate our simulation and they are available on uh, the, the DASO cloud solution. Therefore, uh, if you use 24 uh, cores and 4 GPU, the simulation time for from 4 hours and 20 minutes is becoming 23 minutes. So you see, those simulations are possible. Those simulations may require some time, and you can short the time drastically using high-performance computing locally or on cloud. So I, I really wanted to show you this because it's very nice. Huh? Electromagnetic engineer is really a scalable offer that allow you, you know, to start small, but if you need to, to simulate, you know, a, a connection of PCBs put in the box, yeah, it's a good option. So at the end of the day, my conclusion would be that yes, the virtual EMC, EMI simulation can be and should be incorporated into the product development process in the early design phase. Uh, it's now a trend, really. Uh, it, it, it offers tremendous value and savings. And the so system CST Studio Suite on premise or electromagnetic engineer on the cloud, on the platform on the cloud is really a best class simulation tool to help you to realize this uh, virtual uh, EMC testing. Once again, thank you, Emmanuel. It's been a pleasure working with you. I really enjoyed your presentations and look forward to doing more with you. The same for me, Jeff. Thank you and bye-bye to all. That concludes part three of this webinar series. We learned that CST Studio is a complete solution for electromagnetic simulation, including electromagnetic compatibility. Emmanuel showed how simulation of your electronic device prior to EMC normative testing can save time and money. He also showed that CST Studio includes templates with normative testing device models so PCB designs can be simulated prior to physical testing. We learned that CST Studio Suite provides PCB rule checking that can identify signal integrity and electromagnetic interference issues without simulation. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe and leave us a comment below if you have a topic you would like us to cover in a future video. Visit our website, goengineer.com, for access to professional training, upcoming events, and more from your number one online technical resource. Take care.